Okay, g'day all. Welcome to another video. Uh, it's been a little while. I was busy making a game. Hopefully you'll all go out and buy it as soon as it's ready. It's not quite up yet, but we'll talk about it at the end. Uh, I want to talk about today some, uh, some, some basic drawing in Direct 2D. And we're not going to go on to coding today because I think the, the program, as we left it last time, was um, pretty dodgy. And <laughs> it requires a fair bit of reorganizing in order to get um, real-time graphics. So we'll spend a little bit of time next video um, reorganizing things and making real-time graphics. Um, but today we're just going to have a look at drawing some shapes. Um, without coding, uh, so that next time we've got something to draw. Okay, DirectX is able to render basic shapes like circles and rectangles and lines. Um, they're pretty handy for rendering things like charts and other vector graphics. So modern graphics cards and monitors aren't vector. Uh, they're generally raster, but you can mimic uh, vector graphics with these um, shape drawing routines that we're looking at, which is really, really good for drawing graphs or charts. Okay, so before we can render a shape, what we what we have to do is create a brush to 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 paint the uh, the shape with. And today we're just going to be looking at the most basic brush, which is called the solid color brush. And the other thing that we'll look at is uh, not only rendering outlines of shapes, like the outline of a circle or whatever, uh, but also filling in the shape. So if you want to draw a filled in um, square or whatever. Okay, this is going to be a pretty quick shoot today. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty basic, but we do need something to draw for next, uh, next video. Solid color brushes. Oh, I got a new, um, I got a new microphone too. You might have noticed the sound quality has improved substantially from my, where is it? My $2 desktop mic I was using before. Anyway, uh, solid color brushes. So before we can render a shape, what we want to do is uh, create a solid color brush to, to draw the shape with. Now, there are other brushes. Um, some of them are pretty complex. We've got things like gradient brushes, which you might use to draw a rainbow or something like that. Uh, you've also got bitmap brushes, so you can draw with, with you know entire bitmap images. Yeah, pretty cool. But the solid color brush is very, very simple. It's just a single solid color. Um, and it's created by the render target. Yeah, create solid color brush is the method. So we call the render targets create solid color brush and we pass it a color F, um, which specifies the color that we want the brush to be. And we also pass it a pointer to our brush. Yeah, down here's a bit of an example. So once again, um, this method actually returns an H result. Uh, that's why uh, it doesn't return the the pointer to your to your brush. Um, the H results, you know, you should check if it if it turns out, you know, not S OK. But I haven't done that in the code down here. Uh, I've just assumed that it worked. And the other thing is that this is this is a resource just here, and it's not automatically uh, controlled and garbage collected. So what you want to do once you've finished with your solid color brush is call the release method. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably forget to do that in my <laughs> programming later on. Uh, just leave a comment and tell me to tell me to wake up. Anyway, solid color brushes, nice and simple. So once you've got a solid color brush, you can draw 2D vector shapes with it. This is going to be cool. Okay, so shape rendering functions in, in general for Direct 2D kind of follow the same format. You've got render target, draw something. So XXX will be some some shape. Uh, then you pass the, the shape as a parameter. That's going to be something like D2D1 ellipse or something like that if you're drawing an ellipse or, or rect F if you're drawing a rectangle. Um, then you pass a pointer to your brush, uh, which specifies the color that you're going to be drawing with. And then you've got two other optional parameters, which we're not really going to go into, but the um, line thickness is obviously just the, um, the width of the line that you're drawing with. And the stroke style allows different, uh, different effects, like, like dotted lines or dashed lines. Okay, but today we're just looking at um, creating shapes with brushes, so we won't worry about the thickness and the stroke style. Okay, so all of the examples that, that we're about to go through, I've actually used um, draw and some shape, but you've got another option. You can do uh, fill and some shape. So instead of draw rectangle, you could do fill rectangle. 
And the only difference is that fill uh, draws the shape uh, solid, filled in with the color, in other words, and uh, the draw methods just, uh, just draw the outline. Uh, but other than that, they're exactly the same. So the render target owns all of these methods, all of the draw shape and fill shape methods, they all belong to the render target. Okay, so basic shapes. The first shape that we're going to have a look at uh, is the line. So this is a little bit different to the other shapes that we'll see later because you can't draw a filled line. Yeah, there's no there's no fill line method. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. A line's not 2D, you know. It's only 1D, so <laughs> you can't fill it in. Uh, but the method is pretty simple. It just takes two points. So those should be floating point numbers just there. I think I've made the same mistake on just about every slide. <laughs> just, just pretend that's 100.0F just there and 300.0F and that sort of thing. Um, okay, but the first the first point that you specify is is one of these end points of your line, and the second point that you specify is the other end point. So all the render target's going to do is fill in from um, yeah one end point to the next, and uh, draw your line. Um, and you pass a brush, yeah, like I said before. So this will be a brush that we've previously created, a solid color brush, and that specifies the color, obviously. Oh, and like I was saying before too, you could put comma there and something like 5.0, and that would mean um, draw the line five pixels thick, yeah, and then you've got stroke style after that if you want. Okay, the next shape, rectangles. Okay, rectangles are pretty cool. So render target should be a T just there. Man, there's a lot of typos in this. Um, render targets draw rectangle method takes a D2D1 rect F and a brush and it will draw that rectangle for you. So once once again, if you say fill rectangle, it'll fill it in with color. If you say draw rectangle, it'll, it'll just draw the, uh, the outline. Um, the way that this works is the first two parameters, this 100 and this 25 just here, are one of the corners of the rectangle. So maybe this one up here in the top left. And the other two parameters are a point on the opposite corner. Yeah, so that'll be down here. Uh, it doesn't matter which two corners you specify. Yeah, but these two parameters, or these four parameters, sorry, are read as uh, two points. Um, yeah, the first two for one corner and the second two for the opposite corner. Hope that makes sense. And once again, you specify your brush. Yeah, which will give us the color that you want to actually draw your rectangle with. And you've got thickness and stroke style as well, if you like. Um, all right, ellipses. Now, we've actually used draw ellipse in the past in our dodgy program, I noticed. Um, you can use draw ellipse to, uh, to draw circles. Once again, it's just a matter of uh, calling your render targets draw ellipse method. Only this time, instead of passing a rectangle or a couple of points, for the uh, draw ellipse method, you pass a D2D1 ellipse as the first parameter. And the ellipse itself is specified by a center point. This 25 and 30 just here would be the center point of my ellipse. That's right here in the middle. And then uh, a horizontal radius and a vertical radius, yeah, 10 and 20. So this ellipse down here, assuming that this is actually the ellipse that this, that this draws, um, would be twice as tall as it is wide. So <laughs> it's obviously not the ellipse that this draws. I think I mentioned last time too, but it's really easy to draw a circle. All you do for a circle is you make the horizontal and vertical radiuses the same. Yeah, so if they were both 10, then you'd get a circle of radius 10. Anyway, it's as easy as that really. Um, you specify a brush at the end to color your ellipse. And you've also got fill ellipse if you want. Okay, rounded rectangles. So this one's pretty weird, actually. I, I don't know why they've why they've included this. I mean, it's it's nice enough, but if you include rounded rectangles, why don't you include everything else? Why don't you include triangles? <laughs> yeah, there's no way to draw a, a triangle using these render target methods. You can obviously draw a triangle with uh, direct two D, but you can't draw a triangle by saying um, render target draw triangle. Um, but you can draw a rounded rectangle. So Microsoft thought this was important enough to include a, a method to do it. Um, a D2D1 rounded rectangle is the first parameter. And you specify that with a rect F, which specifies, you know, a regular square cornered rectangle. 
uh, but then you give two radiuses, so the radius X and the radius Y, and that's the radius of these little circles in here, these little ellipses that make the corners. Yeah, so that's, that's um, drawing around a rectangle. And once again, you've also got the option to uh, fill around a rectangle, and it'll turn out looking like this, um, whereas draw around a rectangle just gives you the outline. Um, and you give it a brush as well, if you like. Okay, so we sort of went through that pretty quickly because I think it's all pretty easy stuff and what we really want to do is create some program where we can draw this sort of stuff. So that's what we'll be doing next time. Um, I don't want to code today because I want to reorganize our program for real-time rendering uh, next video and that's going to take a little while. So next time we're going to have a look at creating a real-time rendering loop complete with an update and render method. Uh, yeah, and if you... If you want to know some of the thing, something that I've been working on, uh, it's called intergalactic memory. Yeah, it's just it's going to be an implementation of concentration, the card game. Uh, it should be available in the Windows 8 store pretty soon. Yeah, for about a dollar. Um, yeah, and shortly after that, I'll put up a, a free version, which will have you know a couple of the features stripped back. Anyway, keep an eye on the Windows store out for keep an eye out on the Windows store for intergalactic memory. It's a classic. <laughs> All right. Cheers, all. See yous.